Hello, this is Danny. Today we are going to talk about nutritional balance. Nutritional balance is a mod that enhances the food system in Minecraft to encourage you to eat a balanced diet. Eating a balanced diet will make you stronger and faster, and ignoring your nutritional balance can slow you down and weaken you. So the first thing you'll notice when you have this mod installed is that you will see a little button here in your inventory. Clicking that button will bring up this nutrients window, which will show you all of your current nutrient levels. If you play the nutrition mod in 1.12.2, you'll find that this mod is very similar to that mod. It was definitely heavily inspired by it. Um, however, there are a few differences. First, you'll notice that we have our five nutrients, veggies, carbs, protein, fruits, and sugars, and it will show you where your player is at with the nutrients. Now, when you first start in a brand new world, you will have 50 nutritional units in every category by default. This is, of course, configurable. And as you eat foods, those nutrient levels will increase. The second thing you'll notice when you have this mod installed is that every food has nutrients. So like our zucchini bread here has carbs and veggies, our steak is protein, and so on and so forth. You should find that every single food in the game has some kind of a nutritional value. It's actually very easy to set these values if you're a mod pack maker. Later on in the video, we're gonna get into customizations, but first we're gonna focus on just how to play the mod. So taking a look at the nutrient chart again, um, you'll also notice that we have these little lines and that when we hover over them, they tell us what they are. So this is our target. What we want to do is we want to get all of our nutritional levels within those targets. These targets are also configurable. You'll find that most of our nutrients, our carbs, protein, and fruits have a target and then they have a target cap. And we want to get our nutrients in between those two green lines. You'll also notice that there are red lines at the bottom and the top. The bottom one is malnourishment. The top one is engorgement, meaning that you've engorged yourself in this particular nutrient, you've eaten too much. Um, hitting either one of those red lines will give you negative effects, usually slowness, mining fatigue, and or weakness. The opposite will happen if you get all of your nutrients within the green lines, you will get speed, haste, and strength if you get every one of your nutrients between the green lines. Now, a couple things you might notice is that with the veggies, we don't have a red line. Instead, we have a green line that's way, way up at the top. And when we hover over it, it says our target cap is infinite nutritional units, meaning that we can eat as many veggies as we want and we will still be within our target. So this will be really helpful if you have all of your nutrients balanced out and you don't want to eat anything that's going to put you over the green line, then you can just eat vegetables for a while until you're ready to eat the others. We have the opposite situation with the sugar. The sugar is considered a non-essential nutrient in this mod, meaning that you don't have to eat any of it. Our bottom green target is zero zero nutritional units, so you don't need any. As long as you stay below the green line, you are the top green line, you'll be within your target. Although you can become engorged with that and you can also become malnourished from veggies. So that's basically all there is to it. That's the whole mod, that's the whole gameplay scenario in a nutshell. So you can see right now, I'm hungry. If I eat, let's say a steak, which actually has quite a bit of nutritional units, and you can see we have protein, we have 20.8 nutritional units. Right now, our protein is at 48.2. So we should see that just eating one piece of steak is gonna get us all the way up to 68.8. Now, you do lose nutritional points as you lose saturation and hunger. So as we run around in the world and take damage, and because we've got um, Apple skin installed, we can see our current exhaustion and saturation and hunger. And as those saturation and hunger points go down, so will our nutritional points. Um, and the way that happens is that the nutritional points, it's the exact same ratio. So our nutritional points will be lost equally across all of our categories as we lose saturation and hunger. Now, a good strategy with this mod is that because there is a base, basically a one-to-one -one relationship between your loss of saturation and hunger points and your gaining of saturation and hunger points, what you want to do is eat foods that take you over the top. So like you could be down one hunger point and if you eat steak, which has eight 
Well, it gives you 20.8 nutritional units because the saturation is also included in that number. Then we will get, get a net gain of nutritional points. Also, another thing to consider is that the nutritional units of the sugars are also lost in proportion to all of the other nutrients. So if you never eat sugar, or if you avoid eating sugar, that'll give you an automatic advantage right away at getting your points up. So the mod isn't necessarily designed to make it difficult for you to eat. Like you're not, you're not going to have bad effects unless you completely ignore your nutrition. The idea is that you're just going to have to pay attention to what you're eating a little bit. Now there is some compatibility with JEI, of course, because we have the tool tips. If we search for protein, carbs or whatever um, fruit we can find whatever foods have all of those nutrients for us um, another thing that we can do if we have cooking for blockheads if we go check out our little kitchen in here this by the way is from valhalsia valhalsia structures i did not build this castle <laughs> Um, but here cooking for blockheads we have some compatibility there as well I've got a bunch of foods just kind of stuffed in here so like we can look in here to see let's say we want to find a fruit that is high in saturation so it has a lot of points um, we can do that and sort and look at the highest ones now some of the Pam's foods are extremely overpowered with this mod <laughs> you will find which isn't necessarily going to make things easier for you because it could actually technically make things more difficult like because if we grab a fruit punch so you really have to kind of pay attention to the balance of your food if you're eating really overpowered foods oh i have to get hungry okay there we go then we will see that our fruit got really high pretty fast now if we drink another one of those it may very well actually put us above the green target so you do have to pay attention to that how much you're eating for foods that have multiple nutrients there is going to be an equal division between them so like if we eat a piece of cake well actually we can't see cake uh, be just because of the way cake we can't see the actual nutritional units of cake because of the way cake works but if we look at bananas for instance well bananas are a bad example if we look at pumpkin pie for instance we can see that it's a total of 12.8 nutritional units that's going to be divided by divided into four nutrients i'm actually going to work on getting myself all balanced out here and then i can show you what that is like in a second and then after i do that we'll take a look at configuration we i'm really fast hooray so i now have speed i have strength and i have haste and that is because I've got all my nutrients within the green area. And of course, we can see our sugars are still low, and that does not matter. And we can also see our vegetables are really, really high. I ate I, a lot, a lot of vegetables, and it didn't matter. I'm totally fine. You do lose nutrients when you die. By default, 10 of each nutrient. However, we're not going to lose any sugar because we're already below 50. So it's only going to take you down to 50, not any lower than that when you die. Customizations. So this mod is designed to be very easy to configure. It is using the tag system. If we turn on our advanced tooltips, F3H, if we look at the carrots, we'll see that we have forge colon nutrients slash vegetables, along with a bunch of other tags, but that's the tag that matters for this mod. So forge colon nutrients slash, and then whatever the nutrient is. So we've got vegetables, we've also got fruits, well, we have these four. So it's just forage colon, nutrients, slash, veggies, carbs, protein, fruits, and sugars. You can use data packs to add tags to your mod pack. You can use a mod like Open Loader or Global Data Packs or something like that in order to apply those data packs to your pack, to your entire pack, and easily add foods to nutrient groups. You can also add new nutrient groups that way, although you will need to localize the names of those. Uh, nutrient groups. If you don't want to use data packs, you can also use a config file, which we're going to take a look at later. Now, one thing you might notice is that, for instance, the zucchini bread does not have any tags. And the reason is because one of the things that makes it really easy to configure this mod is the fact that it traverses through recipes. So the only thing that you have to tag are raw ingredients. So if we look at how to make zucchini bread, we'll see that you use either wheat or whatever, um, wheat or barley or oat. These are tagged, 
if we look at wheat, we will see that wheat is tagged. Can I find that in there? Yeah, the top one. Forage, nutrients, carbs. So anything that you make with wheat is going to have carbs. In fact, anything that you make with anything that you make with wheat will also have carbs. So it traverses through all the recipes so that all you have to do is tag your raw ingredients. Um, this makes it so much easier. I can tell you, I got I added support for this mod out of the box for Simple Farming and Pam's Harvest Craft, and I only had to add a few foods, a few raw ingredients, and it was actually really easy to do. These targets, these caps, the engorgements, the starting level, all that stuff we can set in the configuration file. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So here's our malnourishment value below which bad effects can occur. The default is one. Our initial value is 50 and it goes on and on and on. You can also specify the increment of increase. So that means for every food point, we gain one nutritional unit. You can change that. And the same with the decay rate. So as you lose saturation, you can change how quickly you lose nutrients. Um, you can also change how many nutrients you lose on death. And then we can also list the good and bad nutrients. Now they're called bad nutrients here, but they're really this, we're really just talking about non-essential nutrients. These are the nutrients that you don't need. Um, by default, it's just sugars. And our good nutrients, we have vegetables. It's, we wanna have at least one good nutrient so that we can keep our stuff in balance. Um, one food that we can overeat on so that if all of our levels are already up there, we don't have to worry about pushing beyond the levels. And then here, as an alternative to using data packs and tags, we can add foods to nutrients this way. For instance, we can add a tag. So like the simple farming mod already tags its vegetables with forage vegetables. If we add that to the vegetable list, then all forage vegetables will be added to the vegetable list. Um, or we can add the item IDs directly. And you can see I only had to add a couple of a couple of vegetables. So this config file actually is adding support for simple farming, pneumaticraft, Pam's Harvest Craft base, or oh, and create, I actually added and and mine colonies. So there's actually quite a few mods supported in here. Alex's mobs, and I only had to add a few for each mod. So there is more to come. I do plan on adding support for more control over the mod. Also, there are commands that are kind of that are kind of important. Um, the important one for mod pack makers is get unassigned foods. So if you bring that, it's going to check every food in the game and it's going to tell you which ones do not have nutrients associated with them. So we have Minecraft Suspicious Stew. I didn't add any nutrients for that one. Um, you can if you want. I, I didn't think it was worth it <laughs> because it's not something that you, you're going to be eating a lot of. Um, and also uh, Pam's food core stock item. I just didn't add nutrients to that. I mean, generally you're going to put this in a soup or something and that soup will have nutrients. So like if you want to add a nutrient for that, you can. It's easy to do. Every other food in the game has nutrients. And, and that's kind of important, I think, for this mod is like you want every food in the game to have a nutrient. So that's nutritional balance. There's probably going to be more changes to come. If you do have any questions, ideas or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you, t if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.